Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 1, Lesson 13, talking more today about congruence. That's our topic for the day. And we're looking for ways to test congruence of some interesting figures or so it says there. You began looking at some different shapes and it talked about looking at not just the vertices to see if those are the same, but you can use other points as well on the shapes to look for segments that are congruent. So you began first of all saying, draw and label points A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime that correspond to E and F. Well, E is here, so we would make E prime one away from A right there. And F, we said, is kind of a little bit diagonal from this one in the middle point, and we'd make F prime here. Then I want you to make a G prime to find its G uh, partner over there. So it's two away from D. So two away here becomes G prime right there. And then H prime is in the middle, so it's between A and B. So we have H right here, oops. I wrote prime for this one, so it should be just regular old G. Then I wanted you to find at least three more pairs of corresponding points, and you could pick any pair you want. You could put a pair right there and call it Y, and you could put one right there and call it Y prime. So there's lots of different points along this quadrilateral that you could look at and you could label with the regular or prime, so not just the vertices there. When we looked at ovals, what was interesting about ovals to talk about was they're not quite the same as a square shape, obviously. They have curved lines, but you could use a lot of the same principles to decide if these shapes are congruent or not. So for example, these top two shapes, this one had a length right here of three, right? And this one had a length of three. So things are looking good between these two. But when you look at this guy here, this is about, what would we say, maybe two and a half on its height there. And this one here is one, two and a half there. So, so far, these two might be more connected and these two might be more connected. But there are other things you could look at as well. We would anticipate that in the middle of this rectangle, of this oval, that this point should be the same, which is two units there, as this one here, which is also two. And we look at the middle of this one, the middle somewhere about here, we can see that it's about two and it's about two. So there's some similarities here where we might say, possibly, that these are congruent and these are congruent. And you could always take a, uh, you know, a piece of tracing paper and you could put that, lay that right on top of it. You could draw your circle around it, your oval in this case here. We can go around that and we could put it right on top and see does it match or does it not. In this case, we would say, yeah, those are congruent. And it gets you an idea, but you can use points on the oval and do some measurement to confirm whether or not that the shapes are congruent. You took some time also looking at perhaps a little toothpick activity and you create some polygons with those there. And then you're also able to move the toothpicks around to create different types of uh, shapes, looking at your perimeters and your areas, kind of fun activity. In part three, what you looked at was corresponding points on in figures. So it told you that these two shapes are already corresponding and I wanted you to find and label the other points that correspond from one to the other. So from the initial shape to the copied shape. So if this is E on this little inside part, we would call this right here point E prime, which would make the one up before the curve right here, we would call that D prime. And the one way out here, we would call that B prime. This one we didn't give a point, so maybe we just call it F prime. Not sure why I didn't give it a point, but we'll give it one just for fun, all right? Now that's the first part there. With that second, with this thing, the next thing I want you to do is said, take a look at your thing, your, your pictures and draw a line segment AD and AD prime. So AD would be from here to here. So AD is from there to there. So we're gonna go and draw that line right there and then draw A prime to D prime, which is gonna be here to here, okay? So we got that marked up there. When we do that, it does, sorry, so it's the same to do that for BC and B prime, C prime. So let's go ahead and do that while we're thinking about it. So here's B and C, and here's B prime, C prime, right around here. Okay, so when we do that, we can do some measurements to see, well, what's taking place here? So B prime to C, B to C prime ends up being one and gosh, what's that going to be? A little bit more than well, we're at a we're at a fourth, and we're at so we're at one, two, three, four, five, six sixteenths. So one and six sixteenths there, 
And when you look at this point here, we're gonna be at the same place, one and six sixteenths. So your sides, your, your, your segments here are gonna match. This matches that one there. If I use a centimeter scale, I could even do this one here, AD ends up being, um, in this case here, from point there to point there, or at four, uh, 4.3 it looks like, and centimeters, and over here we measure it, and we're also at 4.3. So these line segments also equal one another, okay? Just an interesting point to, to look at and to kind of confirm things. You could use A to E or A prime to E prime to take a look because using points on a curved surface allows us to know that they're going to be corresponding uh, parts. All right. You looked at this little shape, Lex, the astonished faces, and then we're asked if they are congruent and explain your reasoning. You might notice some things that look very similar to one another. They are both ovals, yes. But then there's things like the distance between the eyes. We look here, we're about a half and a half, so we're about one unit away from eyeball to eyeball. Whereas here, one unit gets me to right about there, plus I got a little bit more. So I have a greater amount of space than here. I also notice that the distance between the top of the smile to here is again about one unit there, whereas here, one unit puts me here and a little bit more. So this is a greater distance there. So just some things visually you can tell they're a little off from one picture to the other. Their heights might be the same from bottom to top, right? And their width, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across there, eight across. Does that match here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So while the widths might match and the heights might match, the internal features are just a little bit off there. So we would not say that those are congruent. So in summary, this lesson is that in order to find if a, a determine if a figure congruent you can align one with the other by a sequence of rigid transformations and it's true even for figures with curved sides so the distances between corresponding points on congruent figures are always equal even for curved shapes the point being that if i have a shape a b or distance here and it's congruent that line should be the same as this line here that's the way that should be, right? Whereas if you took a look at these guys here, which they move over to your review here, these are not congruent because we can see that while the links look the same, the place where they are the tallest at here, where it's four, in here is four, when you do your lines and see what's going on, this one's a little bit more to the right when this line comes down and makes it equal. So it's not quite the same. So let's take a look at your homework then tonight. Your homework began with a first of all a picture that said is which shape is congruent to this top shape there. Now when I was looking at this initially I noticed that well one these are pretty close together. These guys here have a lot more space in between. A lot more space in between so I would say A is not going to work. There's too much space in between the lines there. When I looked at D I noticed that instead of being kind of the long way it's kind of on the skinny side. Right? It's like it's rotated, but the dots are going the wrong direction. So D didn't work for me. But I noticed that B and C was that B and C have the same dot patterns as the original. But the difference is, is that there just seems to be some more space. Right, There's excess space here, more space, like it's almost a little bit bigger. And to, to find out that was true, I just made myself a little copy of the original. Oops, sorry about that. Made myself a little copy of the original and drew my circles like so. And then I just put it on top of it. And what I noticed was when I put it there, it was close, but as you can see from, I'll draw this a little bit darker right there in that line. What you can see is it doesn't quite match up. It's a little bit too small. Whereas B fits on there right on top, no problem. So we'd definitely say B would work. For number two, these two figures are congruent with corresponding parts marked. So there's A, A prime, B, B prime, C, C prime. It wants to know our angles A, B, C and A prime, B prime, C prime congruent. So the angle measurements here. To do that, I'm gonna to need to add the angle measurements. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up points B and C right here. To make that line up there. And point B and C right here. Make that line up right there. All right, so I make that there, BC, no problem. 
can make it a little bit longer. It just helps me later on the measurement. So, are they congruent or not? Hmm? I would say the answer is going to be yes. They are going to be congruent. But the reason behind that, explain your reasoning, when you have corresponding shapes, the angles and the side measurements are going to be corresponding as well. This length is going to be the same as this length. This length will be the same as this length. And just as the lengths are going to be the same, so are the angle measurements going to be the same. So if you took a copy and put it on top of that, it would match. So what is this angle measurement? Let's confirm. If I put my line right here, and there's my zero, right? What I have is, if I start at zero, this line, there it is right here, hard to see a little bit there, but this is my line. I'm gonna draw it in a darker color just so you can get a feel for it, okay? So let me draw this nice and red so you can see what's going on. All right, so there it is. And then here this is right here. Sometimes it's hard to see these things. All right, let's put it here. So you can see the one line at the zero. We're gonna start at zero, and when we rotate this around, we get right up here to somewhere between 110 and 120 degrees is where I'm at. So we'd probably say that's about 115 degrees based upon what I'm seeing there. Okay, that's what I have on that angle measurement right there, 115. That's my picture though. Yours might be a little different though, so be careful. So if I take this here and I make that line there and I make this one right here and I take a look at my shape, I could put the line there and there. And when I do that there and there, I end up with somewhere again right about in the middle. At, oops, don't mark on your protractor at about 115 degrees. It's not perfect, but that's what I have there. I will say this, that my, my answer key says that it's gonna be about 110 degrees, okay? That's what it says there, but that could be based upon just the drawing or the size of me printing this out a little bit too, or how I drew my lines. But I have mine, and I'm gonna go with 115, that's what I have there. For A and B, it wants to know here are two figures, show with measurements that these are not congruent. So what you might do is you might take a look at the length of this one here across the longest point, and you can say, well, from there to there, from there to there, I'm gonna be 2.8 centimeters wide. But here to here, I can see that I am 2.5. And if I wanna go across the middle, I'm also gonna be 2.5, right? So I have a 2.5. So I could prove with the lengths here that these are not congruent. All right, one way to do that there. Looking at number four, each picture shows two polygons, one labeled A and one labeled B. Describe how to move polygon A into the position of B using a transformation. So what we're asking about is how do I move A into position B so that I can have that congruent copy moving there. And so we do that by moving some shapes around. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just trace this first shape A here, here, and here, and I want to get it over there. How could I get it to that place there? I might simply do a line, a vertical line of reflection, right? And that would make it snap right on top. I could do a rotation, right, to here, and then I could do another reflection line across there. I mean, there's different ways we can get there. It's up to you how you do it. This one definitely is gonna be much more of a reflection one over the vertical. That's what I would say would be the easiest way to make that shape. If you see something different, you might be making it a little too, more, a little too complicated. On this one here, to go from A to B, we have this skinny little triangle right there. And what's happening is we're basically pivoting or rotating this little guy right there around so if I trace them here and here and here and I pivot around that same shared vertex we can get them to snap in place right there now how far is that that's a great question I could measure that if I wanted to measure that what I'd be comparing would be this line here and its corresponding length right there those are the parts I would be comparing so if I drop that right there and there I look and go huh Looks like I'm rotating about 90 degrees. 
So rotate 90 degrees is what I'm doing. And it looks in this case, I'm rotating clockwise. Okay, so that's what it looks like at least based on my paper there. And finally, the last one for today's lesson, we take the shape here, and this one's pretty straightforward. To move from A to B, essentially all that we're gonna be doing is translating A as it looks like, one, two, three to the right, and then we're going to, once we're here, we're gonna go up one. So it's a simple transformation. We go three to the right and up one. All right, so we can call that a translation because there's no pivot, no turn, no rotation. It's just straight one, two, three, and up one. All right, oops, I drew my shape wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. And there you go. That's our idea. All right, hopefully that helps. Have a great day.